what was the last topic you saw? Get started. Is there any doubt from the topics we discussed? Is there any doubt from the topics we discussed with them? All clear? Last topic we saw was nuclear reaction, right? Our, uh, so the energy produced WS has increased in kinetic energy. U is greater than zero, it's called exothermy. U is less than zero, it's called as endothermy. So I'm going to come Those are all in our interview. Yes, sir, we can hear you. So we have the last two topics. Okay. So the last two topics that are pending are under nuclear reactions. We have Nuclear fission, nuclear fusion. Okay. So, first we are going to discuss about 
nuclear fission right you see in year 1932 right shadwick was a scientist who invented neutron shadwick discovered or say better sorry shadwick discovered neutron so when he discovered it it was later suggested by fermi that neutron is electrically neutral since it is neutral when it is used as a projectile right when it is as used as a projectile to bombard a nucleus for a nuclear what can happen is it does not undergo Does not undergo Coulombic repulsion and penetrates into the nucleus. So this is what happens. So what is going to happen? Since neutron is an electrically neutral particle. when you use this neutral particle for what for a nuclear reaction process if you recollect what did i use for the nuclear reaction can you tell me the general state if you wrote the previous class capital a capital a mass number sir Those are only. What is the general uh, equation for a nuclear reaction? So we know that capital A plus small a gives you capital B plus small b plus q. So what is this capital A called as? The capital A is called as the target nucleus. What is small a called as? It is called as the projectile nucleus what is capital b called as it is called as the product nucleus and small b is called as the emitted particle and q stands for the amount of energy that is getting released it means if a projectile is used to hit a target nucleus then the target nucleus will get converted to a product nucleus plus there will be an emitted particle and charge sorry energy getting released sir uh, in the uh, uh, after undergo what have you done does it undergo So what is going to happen is you will have a target nucleus. On the target nucleus, we are going to use neutron as a projectile and bombard it so that you will get a new nucleus plus the release of some product nucleus and energy. So what happened is when thermal neutron. So when I say thermal neutron, thermal neutron has And energy equal to zero point zero four electron volt, right? Is collided or bombarded with uranium, right? When it is bombarded with uranium, it was observed that barium one forty four fifty six. Got released. Okay. 
Now the question is, why did this happen? So when it was observed, when uranium was bombarded with, when uranium was bombarded with a thermal neutron. So remember, a thermal neutron has an energy approximately 0.04 electron volt. So when uranium was bombarded with a thermal neutron, it disintegrated uranium into two equal parts. I would rather say into almost two equal parts. But the most important point is, in this process, enormous amount of energy, enormous amount of energy got released. Okay. And this process was named as nuclear Right. So that is why nuclear fusion is also nuclear reaction because one nucleus is getting converted to another. Right. So you can make a note. In the vision of uranium, many different products. Different product nuclei have been obtained, of which you can see a reaction like this uranium 235 92. So, when I take this nucleus and bombard it with the neutron S10, then it gets converted to uranium 23692 because that's one. Is there no that you get added to the mass number, but the charge is not there. So, nothing, the atomic number is not disturbed. An isotope of uranium is going to get generated, which is generally unstable. So, due to its unstability, it will try to disintegrate itself into two smaller nuclei, which are of almost equal masses. Right? So, if you see, it gets disintegrated into various 144, 56. Krypton 8936 along with three more neutrons getting released and enormous amount of energy. So, this is one of the products that is observed. I am not saying this is the only reaction that has taken place, but this is one of the products that was observed. Similarly, if I take uranium 235 92 and bombard it with the neutron, what is it going to get converted to? It will get converted to uranium 236 92. And this time, it is not going to get disintegrated to barium and krypton. It will get disintegrated to antimony, which is 133 51, and neodymium NP, which is 99 41, along with the release of four more neutrons and the head. Now, you have uranium 235-92 when it is bombarded with the neutron. See, I am not saying they all are same reaction. I hope you understand. This is different. This is different. Now, the third one which I am going to write is also different. This gives xenon 140-54 and strontium 94-38 plus the release of two more neutrons and energy. Right? Are you 
could understand this. So here, another note to be made is the product nuclei obtained by fission are called the fission fragments. And the neutrons are called fission neutrons. Energy is called as fission. See, it was observed, right? So I wrote the above reactions. No, in the above reaction between uranium two thirty five and a neutron, it was observed that sixty different nuclei got mixed. So what happened in the above reaction? Sixty different nuclei are obtained as fission fragments and they have the atomic number ranging between 36 and 56. So they have the atomic number ranging between 36 and 56. Neutrons produced in the reaction are fast. They almost have energy of two mega electron volt energy. Next is Q value of this reaction is very large, right? And it is almost about two hundred mega electron volt per. That is the amount of energy that is obtained. So the main reason why we undergo or take the nuclear reactions into conservation is only because of the release of energy. But here, one important point to be noted is the neutrons that are getting produced, right? They are having energy of about two mega electron volt. Right? If you go back and see, when you take a thermal neutron whose energy is supposed to be how much? 0.04 electron volt when they are bombarded with the uranium nucleus, they generate these kind of products. This kind of products, am I right? Now, in this product, what is happening is there are multiple neutrons that are getting released. Now, the question is, what will these neutrons do to the remaining uranium to the remaining nucleus? What are the reasons? So, you have one uranium to the remaining nucleus there, and you are bombarding it with one neutron. And when you do that, if you see all the reactions, all the three reactions that I show, in the product side also you have neutrons. But this thing, they are not only one neutron, sometimes it is three, sometimes it is two, sometimes it is two. Now, these neutrons have a high probability of bombarding with the uranium 235 again and carrying out the reaction process. If that happens, then the amount of energy that is getting released will get multiplied. Because what did I 
I tell you, the Q value for reaction is very large because almost 200 mega electron volt per fission. Means if the fission process gets multiplied, what will happen? The 200 will get multiplied. The number of times the reaction is undergoing, and generally, if you see, the reaction will not stop. Right. So the reaction when it keeps on going, what will happen? There will be a lot of energy that is getting used, and it becomes uncontrollable nuclear reaction. When this happens, it gets stuck. You can't control it. The whole world is changing. That should not happen. Then we need to bring in a systematic process where all these things are controlled. So that is what we call it as nuclear chain reaction. And we have a device which is there to have a controlled nuclear chain reaction called as nuclear reactor. So what we have done is now the concept that we are going to discuss is nuclear chain reaction and nuclear reactor. Right. So what happens is from the above reactions, we can understand that we can understand that Your reaction is different. We can understand that in each nuclear reaction, there are multiple neutrons getting released. Right. Neutrons have high probability of reacting with reacting with the target nucleus, releasing few more neutrons. Continuing the process, right? So this kind of a reaction is called nuclear chain reaction. It's called as nuclear chain reaction. What should happen since enormous amounts of energy is going to get released in each process? We need to carry out a controlled nuclear reaction. So, to ensure hmm. safety, there needs hmm. to be a controlled nuclear chain reaction. Sir, I have a doubt. The device used. For it is nuclear reactor. Sir, Now I'm going to tell you different materials that are used in a nuclear reactor for the reaction to get controlled. So I told that the reaction has to be controlled. So when I say controlled, right, what are all the factors that need to be taken into consideration? We know that 
thermal neutrons have energy of how much value they have energy of 0.0 electron volt whereas the neutrons that are getting released the fission neutrons have how much value so they have 2 mega electron volt so what should happen is the first thing is the fission neutron which has this 2 mega electron volt are supposed to get reduced to an energy value of 0.04 electron volt Right. Sir. Right. So, since fission neutrons have fission neutrons have very high energy, what should happen? They should be slowed down to a value of zero point zero four electron volt in order to do what? in order to avoid the escape of neutrons right in order to avoid the escape of neutrons and the half then suitable for fission this is first thing. So the question is, what material can be used inside the reactor for this kind of a process to happen? Means to slow down these neutrons. What are we supposed to do? So to slow down, right now. So to slow down the fast moving neutrons, we use a moderator. and normal water that is h2o or normal water so heavy water h2o right graphite beryllium Are good moderators. So they'll ask you this kind of question to slow down the fast moving neutrons. What do we do? This can be a one mark question. If right? we say moderators, and what are the best examples of moderator? Normal water, heavy water, graphite, or beryllium. And why are we using these moderators in order to ensure that the electrons, the neutrons that got released with very high energy of about two mega electron volt, to get slowed down to a value of zero point zero point zero. So fission neutrons have two mega electron volt. Normal neutrons have value of zero point zero four. Are you able to understand? Right. Second point is in the chain reaction process. The temperature within the temperature cannot get too high. The heat energy getting released is likely to have. A temperature for ten power six Kelvin, which is one million Kelvin or ten lakh Kelvin. Okay, it is that high. So, what are we supposed to do? So, since all this process is happening inside a reactor, the reactor will not be able to withstand this much amount of pressure. There may be an explosion that is possible. So, in order to do that, what should happen is along with moderators, right? So that is the fission material, which is the uranium moderator. That is the normal water, heavy water, etc. Right? Should be cooled. 
right now the question is what material are used for cooling so material used are called as material used are called as coolants They would understand this, right? So the best coolants are water, molten sodium metal, so these are the best examples of coolants, molten sodium metal, no, coolants that can be More of theory, I have nothing to do with this one. And the third one is this is an important one. Write it down. In a nuclear chain reaction, in a nuclear chain reaction, the ratio of number of neutrons produced. The number of neutrons produced at any stage to the number of neutrons incident at that stage, that stage is called multiplication factor. Called multiplication factor K. Meaning, so you saw the reaction, right? We saw that the number of neutrons are getting produced, and there are number of neutrons which are actually bombarded. So, if at a particular stage you are able to find the ratio of the number of neutrons that are getting produced to the number of neutrons which are participating in the reaction, right? So, if you are able to take that value, that gives you a number called as multiplication. All right. So when uh, so multiplication factor which gives the growth of neutrons. So it tells us at what rate the number of neutrons that are getting in the reaction are getting grown. Are you able to understand this? Right now. If K is equal to one, the reactor is is to be critical. I am telling you why this is used. If K is equal to 1, the reactor is said to be critical. If K is greater than 1, the reactor is said to be the reactor is said to be super critical. Okay, the reactor is said to be super critical. In this stage, right? The rate of reaction and energy increased by a very large factor, increased by a very large factor, and explosion takes place. Reaction and energy increase by a very large factor, and you can say that explosion is going to take place. Okay. Now, the next question is
Now the next question is, what if the value of k is less than 1? And the value of k is less than 1, what is going to happen? It is said to be in a subcritical state. In a subcritical state. So due to which what will happen is the process gets slowed down. And eventually stops. So in the previous case, what happened when it was super critical, the energy got multiplied and the process of explosion took place. If the value of k is less than 1, means the number of neutrons getting produced is less than the number of neutrons that are participating, then the reactor is said to be in a subcritical state. At this point, what will happen is the process will get slowed down. And eventually, at one point, it will stop also. So when it is going to stop, what is the ultimate result? We cannot extract the amount of energy that is needed. Right? So it gets stopped and we cannot get the desired energy. Are you able to understand this concept? Now the question is, okay, you're saying all the three factors are happening, then what are we supposed to do? So one thing we saw is, we saw the challenge, what is it? First thing that we saw is the neutrons getting released are very fast. So we have to slow down for the reaction to take place. So for that, what did we use? Moderator. Then we saw, though we use moderator, the reaction is going to release large amount of energy, which is at a very high temperature. So our job is to cool down the process. We use the coolant. Right? And the third problem that we are facing is the multiplication factor. So when you say that the multiplication factor is going to be on either of the side, it is going to be critical in some way, critical, subcritical, or supercritical. So in order to ensure that the process is carried out smoothly, we need certain rods called as control points. Okay. So that is the third point we are going to write. So in order to control the value of K, what happens is rods of materials which can absorb neutrons. So what should happen? The multiplication factor for it to get control, we need to ensure that the number of neutrons are absorbed. Right? So to absorb neutrons, like cadmium and boron are used in the fission process. And what are they called as? These rods are controlled automatically. Or controlled automatically. Right. So, why are they called as control rods? Because the job of a control rod is to ensure that the reactor is either going to the supercritical state or subcritical state. So if that should happen, then what will happen is, if the control rods observe, if it is observed if it is observed that the value of k is going to be greater than 1. If the value of k is going to be greater than 1, then what will happen? More number of neutrons are getting released. So what will happen is these rods go deep into the reactor and absorb neutrons. Are you able to understand? So they automatically start going deep and then they start absorbing the neutrons. Whereas if 
k tends to be less than 1. So what could happen? When k is less than 1, it indicates that the number of neutrons are getting increased are already less. So when they are going to be already less, what should this control do? Should it absorb all the neutrons or should it allow those neutrons to participate? It should allow the neutrons to participate. So what it will do is these rods. Right? So these rods automatically rush out. If uh, they rush out and decrease the absorption of neutrons. Absorption of neutrons. Hence, these rods are called control rods. So, if all these criteria are met, what can happen? So the energy that is getting released from the nuclear fission reaction. understand it. So the last concept of this chapter is will you finish writing? So the last concept of this chapter is thermo nuclear fusion. Thermo nuclear fusion in sun and other Here you see the name is fusion. So basically, what do we mean by fusion? Fusion is combining. So till now we saw what is the nuclear reaction. Then we try to understand what happens in a nuclear fission. Fission is basically disintegration. Means you have a heavy nucleus. Heavy nucleus will get split into lighter nuclei. Whereas fusion is lighter nuclei will combine to form a heavy nucleus. So what if we understand whether it is going to be or dissipation, energy is going to get used. Right. So that is why you see when we say thermonuclear fusion in sun and other stars, we are again going to talk about the energy that is getting released. Are you able to understand what I am trying to say? So what happens is you can make a note of it. When two lighter nuclei are fused. Here the question is, when you try to fuse them, are they going to get naturally attracted like magnets? No. So what should happen is when two neuter, uh, sorry, when two lighter nuclei are fused at a very high temperature, at a very high temperature to form the heavy nucleus, then enormous amount of energy is released. But yeah. So in this process also, there is going to be enormous amount of energy that is going to get released and such process is called thermonuclear fusion. The reason why we are using thermonuclear is because temperature is taken as a Helping factor for fusing. Fusing is combining both the lighter nucleus. So, the reason why we call it as thermonuclear fusion in sun and other stars is because 
This is the reaction that takes place inside sun and other stars to release the level of energy that we are able to utilize. Here, so if you see, you can make a note in sun and other stars. Thermo nuclear fusion. Right? So we can make a note like this. So here there are certain reactions that we need to make a note of. In the sun, energy is produced by a process called Photon photon cycle, which occurs according to the following states. So, as the name suggests, you have a proton and another proton are combined together, then something gets released. You see what is going to happen. So, if I take a proton, which is combined with another proton, then it gets converted to H21 plus E0 plus 1 is going to get released plus mu plus 0.42 mega electron volt of energy, where this E0 plus 1 is called as positron and this mu is called as neutrino. as nuclear. Okay. But the process is not going to stop here because it is not a stable nuclear. So what will happen is this positron is there, right? We get combined with an electron to release gamma radiations. Plus 1.02 mega electron volt of energy. Yes, 1.02 mega electron volt of energy. Now, this isotope of hydrogen that has got H21, this H21 will combine with H11 to produce helium E2 plus gamma plus 5.49 mega electron. Now, this helium P2 is there, right? This helium P2 will get combined with another helium P2 to produce helium O2 plus a proton plus another proton plus 12.86 mega electron volt of energy. And this is going to be the final stage. And this is all about a thermonuclear fusion reaction that takes place in the sun, in the sun and other sun. So what cycle does it undergo? It undergoes a proton proton. So that's all with respect to this chapter. Right. So I've covered everything radioactivity is ready to. That is pending is electronics. That is pretty connected to this. And that's also a major part of the maximum mistake one does. That is, the mistake will be able to complete it. So, after the week, anyways, uh, we are going to have a revision and from the beginning of the day. Okay. I hope you all went through the schedule, right? So, that is our major part of this. Any other doubts? Those are all in any doubts? Okay, then we'll wind up. Okay. So tomorrow we'll start semiconductor.
Thank you, sir.